Hello friends, I am Lalit Vasist and you are watching Engineering Made Easy. Today in this video, we will learn what are polar plots and also we will trace some polar plots here and we will see uh, the general shapes of the polar plots of some important transfer functions here like uh, these four kinds of uh, polar plots and also these three okay so all uh, these polar plots will be discussed here how they are drawn okay how we can trace them but before this let me tell you what are polar plots so a polar plot is a plot of a function that is expressed in polar coordinates we draw these polar plots in polar coordinates with radius as a function of angle okay the polar plots are drawn between magnitude and phase if we have a sinusoidal transfer function suppose this gj omega is a sinusoidal transfer function and it is a complex function so we can represent a complex function as summation of its real and imaginary part so gj omega can be represented as the real part of gj omega plus imaginary j into imaginary j imaginary part of gj omega because if it is in the form of a plus iota b so here we can find the magnitude of this and also the angle of this so magnitude is represented by this gj omega can be represented uh, with its magnitude and its phase so gj omega is equal to magnitude of gj omega and this is the angle of gj omega so let's write this with this represent this magnitude with capital m and this by phi okay angle phi so here this transfer function can be represented as a phasor of magnitude m and the phase angle phi and uh, one important thing that this phase angle phi is measured positively in the counterclockwise direction anticlockwise direction okay the magnitude m and the phase angle phi changes as uh, we change the input frequency omega from uh, 0 to infinity as we vary the frequency from 0 to infinity the magnitude and the phase angle changes so as the omega is varied from 0 to infinity then the magnitude and phase angle changes and locus is obtained in the complex plane by the tip of this phasor gj omega okay and this uh, locus that we obtain by the tip of the phasor is known as polar plot okay uh, we also call these polar plots as nyquist plots now let's come to our topic so here we will discuss some polar plots uh, of some important transfer functions how we can draw these uh, polar plots so some rules are followed here there are total three rules that we will discuss here to draw these uh, curves draw these polar plots so let's start now observe here we will uh, draw all these graphs with reference to with reference to this uh, polar plot so this is the polar plot this is a common polar plot of 1 divided by 1 plus j omega t1 okay so this is the polar plot of this transfer function now if we know the in the next video i will tell you how we can draw this polar plot uh, a dedicated video for the drawing of polar plots but now here we are uh, we will see some transfer functions polar plots uh, with the help of this polar plot how we can uh, change the polar plot how this polar plot changes when we add uh, zero or uh, zeros or poles to this transfer function so the first rule is the addition of a non-zero pole to a transfer function results in further rotation of the polar plot through an angle of minus 90 degrees as omega tends to infinity so here it is omega zero and as we move in this direction this omega is tending to infinity okay so this is the polar plot of one upon one plus j omega t one okay now we will get all these polar plots and also in the next uh, pages with the help of this polar plot we will uh, follow some rules here and i will tell you how we get other polar plots by when we change the transfer function of this with the help of this polar plot so see here this is the transfer function and it is its polar plot and now we are going to get this polar plot with this with this polar plot okay so the rule says 
the addition of a non-zero pole to a transfer function results in further rotation of the polar plot through an angle of minus 90 degrees as omega tends to infinity as omega increases so you see here that uh, here the omega is increasing in this direction okay here it is zero and here it is going to infinity so when we add a non-zero pole to this the roots of this denominator are known as the poles so here you see that uh, the this is the transfer function this is the transfer function of this polar plot and you see that here we have added one non-zero pole to this transfer function okay so when we add a non-zero pole the initial function was 1 by 1 plus j omega t1 now we have added this non-zero pole and uh, so we will uh, we want to draw its polar plot then according to the rule if we add a non-zero pole to a transfer function then it results in further rotation of the polar plot through an angle of minus 90 degrees as omega increases towards infinity so you see here that uh, this 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 is the difference of 90 degrees okay here it is 0 degrees here it is 90 degrees 180 degrees 270 degrees minus 270 degrees so this is clockwise direction so this curve has been rotated through minus 90 degrees initially it was in this direction at at this point only at omega equals to infinity uh, infinity side okay so rotate this you can uh, assume it as uh, here it is uh, the tangent was this line for this now this tangent to this curve is this one okay so you move it from this if this is the angle of 90 degrees so move it by minus 90 degrees its shape becomes like this okay but there is no change at this point at where it is omega equals to zero so these are some uh, frequencies as you can see here this uh, this point at this point it is uh, omega equals to 1 upon under root t1 t2 okay and in this direction this omega is increasing and this length this is the this is the length is 1 okay and here it is under root t1 t2 divided by t1 plus t2 this length okay now we will obtain this polar plot with the help of this polar plot okay so here the second rule will be applied it is it says this rule says that adding a pole at the origin to a transfer function rotates the polar plot at zero and infinite frequencies by a further angle of minus 90 degrees it says that here uh, you see that uh, we have added a pole at uh, zero if you equate it to zero you will get that its root is at zero so it has a pole at zero it has a pole at origin so we are adding a pole at origin to this transfer function okay in this we have added so this is the pole at origin now according to the rule we get a rotation of minus 90 degrees at this point omega equals to zero and also at omega equals to infinity so here we have seen the rotation only at omega equals to infinity but no change was there at omega equals to zero but here we have uh, rotation at both of these places so this is the first case to obtain this from this we first go to this step and then from here to here so rotating this at omega equals to infinity gives us this plot and again rotate this part also at omega equals to zero by minus 90 degrees so first of all this obtain this and then move this point also by 90 degrees so we will get this curve this plot will be obtained okay now i again want to get this plot this is the transfer function as you can see that here we will obtain this transfer function this polar plot from this polar plot okay here uh, in the next uh, polar plot we will add a non-zero pole to this transfer function so we will see a rotation of minus 90 degrees at omega equals to infinity point okay so you see here 
that uh, observe this one j omega 1 plus j omega t 1 now we have added a non-zero pole to this transfer function here you see a non-zero pole has been added to this transfer function and it results in the rotation of this polar plot by minus 90 degree at omega equals to infinity here we see that its shape is like this so now its shape will be something like this it has rotated by 90 minus 90 degrees at omega equals to infinity but no change at this omega equals to zero point okay because these uh, you see that these are the 90 degree angles all these angles so we just move it to another quadrant and rotate it by minus 90 degrees now you observe this polar plot the next polar plot that we will discuss will be will use this polar plot so in this transfer function we will add one more non-zero pole and effect of uh, one more non-zero pole will be rotation of this uh, polar plot at omega equals to infinity by minus 90 degrees so its shape will be something like this uh, let me tell you look at this here we have added one more non-zero pole to this transfer function of previous uh, polar plot it has resulted in further rotation of this polar plot by minus 90 degrees okay its shape was something like this now it has changed to this shape okay rotation by minus 90 degrees now come to another diagram come to another polar plot this is just keep on uh, observing these uh, omega here this this point at this point the omega is 1 divided by under root t1 t2 plus t2 t3 plus t3 t1 and at this point this omega is under root of t1 plus t2 plus t3 divided by t1 t2 t3 okay now we will plot this transfer function its polar plot so we will obtain this polar plot with the help of this polar plot okay here you see that uh, difference between these two transfer functions here we have added uh, one j omega that is the pole at zero so if we add a pole at zero everything is same in this except this pole at zero so we have added a pole at zero so its uh, result will be the rotation of this transfer function rotation of this polar plot at these two points this point and also at this point as i told you whenever we add a pole at uh, zero then it rotates by minus 90 degrees at omega equals to infinity and also at omega equals to zero so if you rotate this point by 90 degrees then it will something be like this okay it has moved to 90 degrees so this point has moved and also we need to rotate this also so from here it will move to this point okay it has rotated the omega infinity part has rotated by 90 degrees so both of these points from this curve have rotated by minus 90 degrees but in case of a non-zero pole this rotation takes place only at omega equals to infinity point only at this point now we will discuss this polar plot how we can draw this from the previous polar plot the previous uh, polar plot was this one but the difference you observe here that what is the difference between these two uh, transfer functions in this and this the difference is only the addition of uh, a non-zero pole here we have added one non-zero pole to this transfer function and we know everything is same here this part is same from here to here so whenever we add a non-zero pole then uh, it results in the further rotation of the polar plot through an angle of minus 90 degrees as at as omega tends to infinity so here you see that uh, here in this direction omega is here from zero it is moving towards uh, infinity and we will rotate this part only whenever we add a non-zero pole then this part this omega equals to infinity part is rotated by minus 90 degrees so this part this omega zero part is same and only this part at uh, omega equals to infinity will be rotated by minus 90 degrees so just move this by further 90 degrees you can think of it as uh, here it is tangent 
now the tangent will act will be this one a angle of 90 degree difference so now it acts as a tangent to it so its shape is like this okay so in this way we can obtain these all uh, transfer functions or uh, the polar plots of these transfer functions with the help of this basic uh, polar plot of 1 upon 1 plus j omega t1 in the next videos we will discuss more about polar plots and we'll also see how we obtained this polar plot of 1 by 1 plus j omega t1 how to draw this curve but for now we have uh, an idea about if we know this polar plot then we can easily and very fast plot these polar plots if we just add uh, some non-zero poles or uh, poles at zero to the transfer function of this transfer function friends there is one more rule the third rule is when we add a zero to a transfer function here we have seen uh, poles at uh, uh, zero poles poles at zero and non-zero poles but if we add a zero to a transfer function then the high frequency portion of the polar plot rotates by 90 degrees in counterclockwise direction here we are we were uh, moving it in clockwise direction we, but in this case here we will use the counterclockwise direction for rotation so every time we add a zero to transfer function the high frequency portion of the polar plot will rotate by 90 degrees in counterclockwise direction it is very easy because now you know how to rotate the polar plots now i hope you got all these points and in the next videos we will see more about these polar plots so keep watching engineering made easy thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe my channel engineering made easy for more videos bye bye friends for more such videos you can uh, subscribe my channel engineering made easy and please don't forget to like and share the video if you liked it for more detailed information you can uh, visit my blog see you soon in the next video till then bye bye